This is the Yard Podcast, Episode 13, Interview with Yihue Sia. Welcome back to the R Podcast. I'm Eric Nance. I'm the host of the podcast where we give those who are new to statistical computing as well as those who have experience in statistical computing some practical advice and and guidance on using the R package for innovative data analysis. And today's episode, I'm very excited to say that we have our first interview ever for the R Podcast. And this is I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and thanks to some good fortune, I was able to um, conduct this uh, interview on site, if you will, um, personally, with Ihua Sia, who, of course, is the author of the Knitter Package, as well as actually many other R packages. And I'm really um, excited to share this interview with you, so um, I'm going to get to it in a little bit. Just wanted to mention that Yes, I had hoped to have this episode out, an, an episode out uh, sooner than this, but um, I realize every time I think I'm able to do a regular release cycle, I end up jinxing myself because there's always some other things that have been coming up lately. But um, maybe if I just don't say anything, I'll actually get to a regular cycle. We'll see. But anyway, I want to thank uh, those of you who have uh, been there throughout the start. You know, thanks for tuning back in and obviously welcome to um, any new listeners as well. And enough of my uh, ranting here. Let's get to our main topic, our interview with Ihua Sia. All right, everybody, welcome back to the R Podcast. And this is a very exciting uh, time for the podcast because we have a few firsts here. It is the first uh, interview for our show, and then also it's the first uh, recording outside of the R Podcast studio. We are actually on location here at the uh, Midwest Biopharmaceutical Statistics Workshop, and I have the pleasure, thanks to some good luck and uh, good coincidence, of um, interviewing uh, Ihui Sia. And this is very appropriate for our season on reproducible research because he has been at the forefront on in my opinion, one of the biggest innovations R has seen um, with the uh, creation of the Knitter Package. So uh, without further ado, sitting right next to me is uh, Ihoi Sia. Uh, Welcome to the R Podcast. Uh, Thanks, Eric. Uh, This is Ihoi. I'm uh, currently a PhD student from the Iowa State University. And uh, today I feel very glad and exciting to be here. Excellent, excellent. We're, we're excited to have you here as well. And um, you've already touched on a little bit about yourself, and we'll definitely get to a lot of your um, accomplishment, accomplishments and developments in the art community in a second. But um, I first wanted to start off with uh, asking, you know, how did you get started using R? So that was back into 2004 when I was... Uh a junior student uh, in Renmin University in Beijing and uh, when I was studying uh, two courses, one of them uh, was the non-parametric statistics and the other is, uh, was a st- statistical computing taught by uh, uh, Dr. Xin Wang who was the student of another professor named Xie Zhi Wu who introduced R into our department. And uh, later, actually, we have been organizing our conferences in China. And uh, actually, we, we just finished the sixth R conference in, in uh, Beijing. Great. Yeah, so that, that's exciting to be able to organize those kind of conferences. But it must be a lot of work, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, and um, let's see. Um, and one thing I wanted to touch on um, is obviously... You are the author of a few R packages. Um, For our listeners that are not familiar with your work, um, what um, packages have you authored for R? 
So my first package was called the the animation package, and I created that package in two thousand and seven. Uh, and now I have actually I guess maybe around eight packages on Cran and a, a couple of other packages on GitHub. So yeah, that's yeah. That's Great. Right. And um, one of your more I guess somewhat more recent packages that. Uh, is definitely going to be the focus of um, our um, discussion today um, in general is the knitter package and um, I'm sure many of our listeners have heard about it by now because I have um, introduced it a couple episodes ago but um, if you could give just a quick summary on what was the purpose of um, creating knitter what what in your mind took you to the next level of creating a new R package for in essence um, functionality like S-Suite, but just a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because I, I have been using S-Suite for maybe more than four years, uh, mainly writing my homework. And uh, I, I found just there were many problems with S-Weave that I, I, want, I want to solve. So just, uh, so just one day, I maybe uh, while I was developing another package, and I, I just can't stand as weave anymore. So <laughs> I just started writing another package. Uh, when I when I saw actually Hadley's package called uh, Dacuma, which is, which is on GitHub, but uh, it was not published on Cran. So the 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 first version of Neither was actually based on uh, his package, and later there were uh, more and more uh, feedback from the users. So. This package has been uh, improved since then. Yes, um, and actually one of the nice things is you've um, hosted the package development on GitHub, and yes. that's been a really interesting and, frankly, a very innovative way of following a package development. And I think um, you, alongside, um, as you mentioned, uh, Hadley and others uh, in the R community are really making great use of GitHub to, in my mind, really connect with the users and if there are any issues with the packages, we have an easy way of filing, you know, small bug reports or feature yes. requests. And um, actually, I'll I'll tell the listeners who may have been following my uh, podcast blog, they suddenly saw a, a look like a test post on my site, which was me uh, testing some functionality of um, using Knitter to publish directly to a WordPress blog. And it was funny at the time I was doing it and I'd wanted to be just as a draft and it only went to the site and I was like, oh man, what happened here? But then I, I went to the GitHub page and you, you, you were very kind to see the issue I had and make an update to Knitter to address that purpose. But that was just a microcosm of, frankly, that great interaction that you have with, with your um, users of Knitter and, of course, your other packages with using GitHub. And um, kind of along those lines about packages, I've, I've written one package so far. I hope to create more. But um, I remember the first time I went through it, it was kind of an arduous task to figure out what were kind of the best practices and kind of the guidances for creating, you know, a robust package. So um, for our uh, listeners who are thinking of creating a package themselves, what, uh, what advice do you have for um, getting started with creating our packages? First, I, 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 I will strongly recommend everybody to uh, use GitHub for package development where you can have very quick interactions with your users and on the other hand, you can get other developers involved in your, in your package, package development. And uh, so there are some technical uh, advice like... Uh, I have been uh, so, so my first package animation was uh, developed using the normal R documentation system, and but later I found uh, it was hard to maintain uh, the the official R documentation system. So later I switched to our Roxygen, mm -hmm. and now it's Roxygen two yes. for for documentation purposes, and it's much much easier to to document your functions and objects in your packages and that's something I would also uh, want to recommend to other people and actually if, if you want to get started with developing our packages I have uh, 
I have a GitHub repository named rmini, meaning uh, a minimal R package. You can find that under my account, which is uh, github.com slash ehoi slash rmini. And there are some examples in this package, including how to document your uh, functions with Rockstream 2, how to uh -huh. write package vignettes, vignettes, and uh, like how to include C code into your package and things like that. So there's well, very some, interesting. Yeah, some minimal uh, uh, structure of a package. Wow, what a great resource for everybody to take a look at. Um, that, 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 I didn't even know about that, so I learned something new already. Um, that's great. <laughs> oh, perfect. We got an exclusive here on the ER podcast. Oh, 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 cool. So that, that's really great. I'm, I'm definitely going to be checking that out after this. Um, and, um, you mentioned, um, package big nets, which I think, you know, I've seen both sides of the fence on kind of the best ways of producing that. But one thing, I noticed recently with our version three that was recently released is now they have added support for making vignettes outside of S Weave, and yes. I I would like to know how did um how did that come about and um uh, what what was that interaction like with the R core team? Uh -huh, you know maybe I shouldn't say this, but it's true that it's hard to to convince our core to add some new functionalities <laughs> in our system. But anyway, I, I, I would like to thank uh, Duncan Murdoch for the support, for the great support uh, mm -hmm. in this area. So I, I, I guess I contacted him like uh, three or four months ago uh, about uh, this issue. And uh, fortunately, he, he agreed with me and uh, added support for non-SV uh, VNets in, the, in our packages. And now you can register your own engines to compile your package vnets. Great. That, that's, I mean, that's a great um, capability because not uh, you could also now have the capability through, say, the Knitter package of using the uh, Markdown format for vignettes as well. Yes. And I recall one example that you had uh, mentioned in one of your uh, posts on your blog, which we'll definitely plug at the end, is um, the core plot package where it had a nice um, HTML vignette, but it was produced in Markdown, and right. that that was quite interesting. But now that's that kind of functionality is going to be more accessible to mm -hmm. future uh, package authors. So that's that's definitely exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing, speaking of that Markdown format, um, we, you and I were just talking before we recorded that I've been a big fan of the Markdown syntax as opposed to the LaTeX syntax. And I'm not trying to, you know, speak anything bad about LaTeX because it, it cannot be beat for publication quality. But it seems like using Markdown with, with Knitter to create like HTML pages, if you can put them on GitHub or on your own site, it's really making, in my opinion, the concept of reproducible analysis a lot more accessible to the masses, if you will, of our users or even those in statistical computing. And um, I guess I just wanted to touch on how important is Markdown and those kind of features and perhaps getting reproducible research more, how should I say, more mainstream or more easily, you know, practiced for those of us writing statistical analyses with R in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, the good thing about Markdown is that everybody can learn that in probably in five minutes. And uh, the the real important thing about reproducible research is to get the idea of uh, just embedding your computing into your into your reports or into your documentation. And to to get this idea, you don't have to. Uh, learn LaTeX, which is probably too difficult to to many people. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we probably need to do is uh, like kind of better education. I mean, in the in the education of uh, maybe students in in the de uh, de department of statistics, like when when you teach uh, the graduate students uh, how to. Uh, Teach, teach them R, maybe you can just uh, teach them uh, tools like, like Knitter mm -hmm. as well for them for them to feel that it's not terribly difficult to get started with reproducible research. 
Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's been, you know, when I first started with it, I, the way I got into it was writing my dissertation in S Weave. And, um, we got to touch on it before. That's uh, LaTeX itself is uh, quite advanced, and it was my first foray into it. But had like Knitter and Markdown been available back then, I think that could have saved a little bit of time just on that front alone. Um, and then one uh, one kind of on, in addition about Knitter that I noticed recently is um, you've had what I believe is a, a great interaction with the R Studio team. Yes. And one thing I noticed in one of their uh, recent releases was the integration of using not only s but also Knitter as well mm -hmm. for compiling either markdown reports into HTML directly via the click of a button and also obviously compiling PDF uh, files from a, a LaTeX, you know, RNW type file. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our listeners a bit about how did you um, get kind of started with the R Studio team and getting that uh, feature built in? Yeah, sure. Actually, the, the, the integration of data into R Studio is such a, a great contribution to the R community that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always uh, grateful to the developers, JJ Allaire and Joe Tim, for, for their effort on uh, in this aspect. So I first, um, I guess I met JJ in Houston, Houston in last um, May, or I guess in last May, at the, at the uh, conference called Interface, Interface 2012. Okay. But before that, actually, we, we had some email conversations back and forth discussing uh, uh, cooperating uh, on, on integration neither into our studio and uh, we we actually uh, so JJ and I were invited to the use uh, 2012 to give uh, a speech there mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so uh, later so so the everything has been going on very well and uh, so in, in fact uh, the integration of Knit into R Studio is nothing but a call to the function Knit in, in, in the package. But mm -hmm. uh, there ha there has to be some uh, great effort on um, building the GUI elements so that the user can just click the button to call the Knit function in the in the Knit package. Sure. Yeah, and uh, so this is one thing they did very well, and I I truly appreciate that. And the other thing is uh, actually the spin function yes. in the Nero package, which, which allows one to create a report from a pure R script, which is also uh, very fancy. And uh, we have some other issues uh, uh, which we work together, like the auto completion of chunk options, like mm -hmm. when you write uh, less than, less than, and uh, greater than, greater than, in between, you can auto automatically complete the, the chunk options. And that's something I have to do in Nidra, and uh, JJ has to uh, 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 use the objects in, in the Nidra package to, to finish the auto -com completion. And there are also other issues like the character encoding, which are uh, very important to especially international users. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just things like that. Wow. Well, it's, I mean, I remember when I first saw it, I just was thinking, what a great innovation on multiple fronts. And as listeners of, of the podcast know, I've been a big fan of our studio ever since it was released. And I've used it in a couple of screencasts, and it's been a huge uh, improvement in my uh, workflow for uh, creating R scripts and, and debugging and creating graphs, everything like that. Um, I just wanted to touch on from when you um, work on your uh, projects in R, mm -hmm. what are some, what's in your toolbox essentially? What are some of your favorite tools for mm -hmm. all things doing with R development? Yeah, like uh, two years ago, I was still using Emacs with ESS. But yes. later, I, because I, I saw R Studio was becoming better and better, I just switched to R Studio from Emacs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the main editor that I, I use for for the uh, R development. And I guess sometimes I use some uh, lightweight editors under Ubuntu, like the G-Edit editor. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yep, and um, I think we touched on it a little bit before we recorded, but um, is your operating system a choice, uh, Linux or, or Mac or Windows? Uh, what do you prefer? Yeah, it, it's mainly Linux or uh, Ubuntu. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, to me, uh, Ubuntu has been one of the easiest uh, distributions to use, and it's really easy to get R installed, and of course, R Studio as well. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, one of our innovation that I believe is more recent with respect to Knitter is um, I saw in your recent release, maybe a couple of releases ago, you now have a demonstration of um, creating basically a, a research notebook interacting with the Shiny interface. Yes. And um, could you uh, touch on, you know, where do you see uh, Shiny going, and especially with interactions with Knitter and other kinds of reproducible analysis? Yeah, Shiny is, uh, is a great innovation in terms of uh, the interaction between R and the web browser. And I, I wrote uh, an R notebook in the, in the Knitter package, which you can find under the demos in the Knitter package. You can just type demo... This is demo notebook, and you mm -hmm. will see a, a, a live notebook in your web browser. And uh, I, I think that's, that's very important to the R community because um, it allows uh, us to build web applications very easily and uh, quickly. And, uh, you know, the, when you show the, uh, the apps to your uh, users, you, you, they don't have to install R. They just simply open their web browsers and they will show, um, they, they will see uh, what's going on in your in your apps. Yeah. Now I I remember when I first saw Shiny, I was blown away by it because mm -hmm. I we haven't really touched on web development yet in the podcast, but I certainly will be. But with Shiny coming out from the R Studio team, I feel now that kind of um, interaction with web development, interactive web applications mm -hmm. has now become a lot more accessible to the yeah, users, yeah. much like well, how I feel Knitter has made reproducible research more accessible to users as well. Mm -hmm. And um, just going back to Knitter for one last point, um, you know, you've obviously built a lot of great features recently. Um, we already touched on kind of the, the WordPress publication and um, another feature you recently put in is uh, direct hooks with Pandoc, the, mm -hmm. uh, what we call the Swiss Army knife of document conversion. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you touch on what are, what's next for Knitter that you have planned, if you can touch on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you, as you said, I have uh, started uh, working on the Pandoc support in, in Knitter, but that's just, uh, uh, just, just a starting point, and I, I need to work further on this, especially uh, maybe I will... We, uh, I will discuss this with our studio guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, in the future, uh, we will be able to just click button to call Pandoc to convert our markdown documents to, to other formats like oh. LaTeX or PDF. That would be huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, the other thing is, I I would like to encourage package uh, authors to. Uh, write uh, markdown units in, in their packages, and this is something that I plan to 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 blog about uh, a month ago. But unfortunately, I, I went back to China on vacation, <laughs> so I didn't write that post. Maybe I I will do that very soon. And uh, the third thing is that I probably will uh, work on the support of tables in in Miller. Oh, there interesting. Are already, yeah, there are already some. Uh, some packages like Xtable and also Dungeon the Docs uh, tables package. I think mm -hmm. that there are some existing packages, but uh, what I want is just uh, uh, some simple support to tables. Uh, the reason that I want to do this is uh, uh, due to the Pandoc support. I, I mm -hmm. want to produce uh, tables that uh, that's appropriate for for the Pandoc syntax. And uh, also, I would like want to I want to work on uh, getting rid of some legacy code in in the in this package mm -hmm. because in the in the very beginning maybe I wrote some uh, wrote some code that I, I don't want to maintain anymore <laughs> like the because in, in the very first version of Nader I used the highlight package to do syntax highlighting. Right. But later that package was taken off by Crane, but now it's, it's coming back. But 
but I, I just like I can do the syntax highlighting using some uh, new functions in R three point zero, like the get parse data in the utils package, and that shouldn't be too hard to do. And uh, the last thing that I want to work on is to just uh, uh, do some web. Uh, do more web applications like building websites, sure, or yeah, shiny apps on top of, on top of Nader. Wow, yeah. well, that would be really exciting to have too. Um, well, so a lot of uh, new features coming. We're definitely looking forward to seeing that. Um, but um, I mean, one thing I I noticed is you know Nitter has obviously grown almost exponentially in its capabilities since it first started. Um, I, I know a question I've had just uh, thinking about this is, how do you find time to work on all this? <laughs> yeah, people have been asking this question again and again. Uh, I mean, as long, I mean, I, I, of course I'm very, very interested in the development of this package and, uh, you know, as long as you have, have enough interest, you, you will always find time to work on work on the things that you you, you love. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it's great that you have that that excitement and that that, that passion to drive the development forward because uh, you have obviously a lot of users, and myself included, that are big fans of the package, and we're we're always uh, keeping tabs on what's next in the release and keeping tabs on updates on the GitHub page. It's just really exciting to follow this. Yeah, there are also other uh, users who are very helpful. I mean, they, sometimes they answer questions on Stack Overflow or sure. the mailing list for me, so I don't have to take care of <laughs> all, the, all the questions in the world. Yeah, because obviously, you know, everybody's using it in different ways. And mm -hmm. I, I think you, you just touched on a couple key points is with kind of R and the open source model, if you will, you know, all of us in the community can chime in with helping each other and right. everything like that. And um, yeah, you touched on two sources. First off, uh, the stackoverflow.com, which for you listeners not familiar, that's kind of a, started as a computer programming Q&A, but now it was about maybe two or three years ago that the R community got involved too. And now if you search questions with the, the tag R, you'll be able to get all sorts of R questions and answers and also the knitter tag. And I've been kind of keeping tabs on that, where I'm trying to set up a way for me to be automatically notified when a new question comes up so I can learn something new. Right. And then also, um, you also have the uh, dedicated mailing list for Knitter as well. Yeah. And um, that believes on Google Groups, right? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So I would definitely invite listeners that are you know wanting to have issues with Knitter or just want to know what other users are doing. Those are some great resources to... Uh, take a look at as well mm -hmm. and um, yeah would you have any of our thoughts on you know interacting with the community and knitter in general or yeah that, that's something I forgot to mention when, when we were talking about creating our packages uh, the, the, I guess one of the most important things of creating packages is to maintain them and uh, of course, you, 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 you don't have, uh, you only have 24 hours. <laughs> Everybody has 24 yes. hours each day, right? Yeah, we so wish we had more sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, thing, one important thing to keep in mind is to build a community for your products. Yes. Yeah, so, our, so other people can help you. Yeah, and uh, what, you know, as you mentioned, GitHub is providing like a nice venue for that. With right. It's been called social coding, but it really is one of the most... Uh, interesting and innovative ways to follow development of things like Knitter and your other R packages as well. So mm -hmm. obviously uh, both you and I are obviously big fans of R itself and we've been using it for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Now there's always been a lot said about people that think R needs a lot of improvement you know, right. in certain areas. I just want to know from your perspective what kind of things would you like to see improved in R down the road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my eyes there are a couple of things. So the first thing is I really, really want a better documentation system, especially in terms of the support for graphics in the in the R documentation. I mm -hmm. think it's a, it's kind of a shame that our I know our uh, the, the the official R documentation does support graphics since R two point thirteen or uh, I don't remember the exact version. Mm -hmm. uh, it does support graphics, but it's uh, what what I want is 
to be able to produce uh, R plots from from R code, like like the combination of some R code with Markdown code, and and then produce the R doc documentation. And the second thing uh, is I want the the development of base R to be more open. Oh, meaning right. That maybe maybe it's just a, a dream that will never come true. I I, I <laughs> hope that R core can can move the development of R from their SVN repository to GitHub. I guess that's, that might be impossible. But anyway, uh, there. I mean, sometimes you see uh, email. Discussions in the in the R main mailing list, like the the R development at R uh, the R devil at mm -hmm. rproject.org, that there are some just minor problems which shouldn't have bothered all the people in the mailing list. If 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 the R core can adopt the 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 idea of social coding like on GitHub, these minor problems can be quickly fixed by. Uh, the users instead of just asking the R core to fix them and bother everybody in the, in the mailing list, right? Right. And uh, uh, the third thing that I that I hope that can be improved is uh, is CRAN. I have talked about <laughs> this a couple of times in my blog. Especially, I want the package development to be easier for. Uh, for, for, for for package authors when they especially when they submit packages to CRAN, uh, what I what I really want is uh, is a continuous testing system. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I really don't want to talk to uh, real people. I, I hope my packages can be automatically checked and I will be notified about the, the possible problems in my packages sure. automatically instead of. Uh, emails from a real person, I mean, from the crane group. I see, and, right, and right. Probably, I, I, I guess I will work on this in, in this summer with the bioconductor people. Oh, interesting, yeah. right. So is this a, one of those uh, Google Summer of Code projects, uh, or is not, this something different? Okay. Not really. I, okay. I, I will do uh, the, my internship in, in Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research oh, Center. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, and, and, you know, the biofinancial people are on the first floor, and the Hutchinson people, Hutchinson people are on the second floor. Oh, very so interesting. I, I have plenty of chances to talk to them. Oh, wow. Well, that, that, that's an excellent opportunity, and I've been actually... Uh, using bioconductor for a lot of my, you know, work of uh, our analyses, and that that in itself is a huge innovation in terms of like uh, pharmacogenomic and what we may call biomarker research. So that's interesting. You'll be you'll be at the headquarters of that. I'll definitely be interested to see how that goes for you. Um, and then um, one other thing you mentioned your, your blog, and we'll plug that you know towards the end here. But you also had an interesting um, idea, I believe, last year about maybe some innovations we could do for, you know, writing statistics journals. And I don't know if you wanted to touch on, you know, your thoughts on that going forward, if you think that's a feasible thing and what you had envisioned for that. Yeah, I, actually, I'm not very confident about talking uh, talking about this idea because, you know, I, I don't publish very often. I, mm -hmm. I only have two papers in one book, and uh, I don't publish very often. So, but anyway, uh, I, I so I, I I had that idea last year, and uh, later I built a website called Vistat, and the the URL is vist.substat.com, uh, and you can find the uh, repository on GitHub. Excellent. Later, we'll put that in the show notes for sure. Yeah, yeah. Later we will put the link. To, to that repository, and uh, what 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 I want to do is um, to make it easier for authors to cooperate with each other using the GitHub model, and also make it easier for reviewers to to interact with authors. You know, when you write a new paper uh, using, uh, if I use the terminology of GitHub. It, the new paper is basically a new pull request to the main repository of the journal. Right. So if you write a new if you write a new article, you just submit a pull request to the 
to the main repository of the journal, and the, the journal editor, when the journal editor sees your pull request, he can or she can invite a reviewer to, to do the online review. So there are uh, many things that are very convenient on GitHub, including the, the, the inline comments. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you just, if you have finished reading the third paragraph of your paper, the reviewer can write the comments right under the third paragraph on, on GitHub, and that's very uh, handy. So now I have got some uh, contributors to this VSTAT repository, including Li Jia Yu, and who, who contributed uh, quite a few articles on my animation package. Oh, so interesting. Now, yeah, so now we can generate animations uh, from meter to the website dynamically. You, you don't have to maintain all the R plots. You just write the R code there to produce plots and Nita will automatically generate uh, animations. And also other contributors like Tar Carl Roman, who, oh, yes. yeah, who collaborated on an article about the math expressions in R, mm -hmm. and that's uh, also a handy demo of the capabilities of R graphics. And uh, I think, uh, so basically I have been experimenting with the publishing process from submitting the new article to accepting that article and see how the interactions uh, go on. Wow, that sounds a very interesting uh, process, and I'll definitely be keeping eyes on that because, you know, the publication model traditionally in, in statistics or science in general, I think could use some innovation to say the least. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with, with the work you do, I mean, yeah, you, you may say you haven't published very many papers per se, but your, your development of knitter and everything like that, I mean, to me, that is on equal footing as all that, too. So, I mean, hopefully in the future, those, I mean, it's, you're already getting great recognition as it is, but I hope in the future that they'll be, you know, growing exponentially with other users as well. And one thing I, I forgot to touch on with knitter itself is that now there are some really interesting uh, packages that have been developed that use knitter as a base. And... I, I've been experimenting with some of them as well. I believe like the reports package and mm -hmm. knit citations. And just from your perspective, um, how how cool is that to see Knitter being used as a base for all these other interesting innovations? And, and what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I have been looking at the, the crime page of Knitter and I'm really happy to see more and more packages which uh, depend on Knitter or suggest Knitter to uh, maybe when, when they suggest uh, the Knitter package, maybe they want to write their VMS in, uh, with, with Knitter. And um, of course, I'm very happy to see that. But one, one thing that uh, might be a problem to me is that if you get uh, more and more dependencies um, on, your, on your package, you have to maybe it will be more difficult to maintain that package mm -hmm. because. Uh, uh, to, uh, to some extent, you, you will be stuck. <laughs> in, in there are some things that sure. you, sh you won't be able to change in the future. But sure, anyway, sure. Yeah, that, that, that's something I pay. Uh, I'm very careful about because you know I, I, I don't uh, I don't do the, uh, many advert uh, ads on R. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't promote this package very much by myself, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is. It's not that I don't want the fame. It's that I don't want to be stuck. I don't want too many people to depend on my package too quickly. Oh, I yeah, see. So, yeah, okay. I want the functionalities to be mature uh, step by step. Well, I think one thing is you're already quite famous for this, so I think that part's done. But um, I, I think it's interesting just to see all that spring up from, you know, um, Knitter as an innovation where, you know, I view, you know, Knitter alongside, of course, our studio being developed and um, some recent enhancements to like ggplot, for example, as being like these really key innovations in R in the past, you know, year or two that I think is really taking things to the next level. And, yeah, we're definitely excited to see where that goes. So um, this has certainly been a, a, a great, um, great uh, uh, interview with you. Is there anything else you wanted to tell our listeners before we wrap things up? Probably, and maybe, maybe that's it. That's it. All right. That's great. That's great. 
And um, if, if our listeners want to, you know, see what you're up to and then want to contact you, what are the best ways I can get a hold of you? Yeah, would you like to touch on that, like um, websites and, and your... Yeah, uh, whenever you want to uh, uh, contact me, uh, I always prefer the, some public places like Stack Overflow, Absolutely. mailing list, sure. and the private emails will always be the last choice. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. So your GitHub repo, um, can you give that URL again for our listeners? Oh yeah, sure. My GitHub, uh, GitHub account is it's just my first name, Egoi, so okay. just github.com slash Egoi. Great. And uh, how about your, your blog? Uh, where can uh, people yeah, find my that? My blog is ehoi.name. Okay. That's an unusual domain. Uh, yeah, it was different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't imagine many. It was difficult to get that one, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Great, great. Well, um, I just want to uh, thank you again for, for your, your excellent um, contributions to the art community. And, you know, this is this is... I feel like I'm meeting a rock star today. I mean, this is, you're, you've definitely been in my mind one of the biggest innovators of, of the R space. And I'm really excited you're able to share with our listeners your thoughts on, on these topics. So, uh, Iwei, thank you very much. And um, we will re- be right back to wrap things up. All right. Thank you. Well, that was a, an excellent uh, interview with Iwa. And I wanted to thank him again personally. Um, he had had a, a bit of a travel issues uh, getting here to the conference, and I really appreciate his willingness to uh, meet with me and uh, have this uh, interview. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I certainly hope uh, you, uh, the listeners, enjoy it as well. Um, it was a real honor and privilege to meet with him and uh, find out so much more about the work he's doing and what he has planned for the future. So, um, Ihua, uh, thank you so much. Um, Next, we're going to wrap up the show in a little bit. Um, I won't have any listener feedback this week, but um, I do want to mention a brief uh, package pick. All right, well, this uh, package, uh, you know, obviously I could could talk about Knitter all day, actually, but... I mean, that would be a logical choice, but I do want to highlight, you know, one of the pieces of software that Ihua mentioned when in the recent development of Knitter is the interaction with the Pandoc software. So Pandoc is actually not an R-specific tool, but it's a, a freely available kind of a all-purpose document conversion program. And it, I did not hear about this until I recently, um, my, about a year ago, saw some, uh, you know, using people using Knitter to create uh, HTML slides. And it was very interesting because I never even heard about these kind of slides before. Well, it turns out that they would, you know, use um, R Markdown to make their slide material. And then they would have that compiled into a regular Markdown file. And then they would use Pandoc to uh, convert the Markdown files into an HTML slide deck and it offers uh, multiple choices for these slide decks but it just is a really interesting application and I was able to use that for some presentations at work and people were pretty surprised like we haven't seen this before and how are you able to use just a browser for it and then that's where uh, Pandoc comes in so Pandoc actually converts uh, many uh, types of documents into many um, you know output of uh, formats you know, HTML is just one of them. It also is able to convert into uh, LaTeX PDF files. Um, it's able to convert to, ironically enough, uh, Microsoft Word documents, and it can take many types of sources. So Markdown, for example, LaTeX, um, and other types of special text markup files. But it's a really interesting piece of software, and it's really um, giving us a lot of capability of producing some really um, interesting output in these uh, different formats for whatever our purposes are. So I'll have a link to Pandoc in the show notes, and I definitely invite you to check it out, especially with how Knitter interacts with Pandoc um, through the Knitter package itself. And um, next, I wanted to highlight one of the uh, And I'm going a little out of order here, but up next, uh, before we wrap up, I want to highlight the R Community Roundup. (music) 
So the the biggest piece of news that since we last recorded is um, R version three has been released, and in fact they've just uh, the R core team has released the R three dot zero dot one just over about a week or so ago. So I just want to extend my congratulations to the R core team for this uh, excellent achievement. Obviously, um, R has come such a long way from its beginnings, which we had documented in, I believe, the first or second episode of the podcast. And it's just really nice to see, you know, such a milestone release uh, come around. And you can uh, check out the show notes for uh, some recent changes. Um, but it's I just want to extend, again, my congratulations to the team. And we're really looking forward to see what the future has with R itself. So... Um, next, we're going to kind of wrap things up here. Um, as usual, you can uh, find out more about the show, um, download our episodes at our site, uh, www.r-podcast.org. And if you want to contact the show or contact me, you can submit your questions a few different ways. Um, the easiest would be is to go to our site and hit the contact link at the top of the page, which will take you to a nice, uh, simple form you can uh, put your questions or comments in. You could also email me directly at thercast at gmail.com. You are also, um, I really would appreciate uh, seeing some uh, audio feedback as well. You could um, either send an audio comment that you recorded on your you know, laptop or whatever at the same email address, thercast at gmail.com, or you can leave a voicemail on the R Podcast voicemail hotline. That number is plus one two six nine eight four nine nine seven eight zero. You can also follow our Twitter account. We are at the Rcast for show updates and on releases and everything like that. You can also get updates on our our podcast uh, Google Plus page. That's uh, g plus dot two slash the Rcast. And um, also, as I I launched uh, somewhat recently, the um, our podcast subreddit, where I'll post uh, some interesting uh, stories from the R community. That's at links.r-podcast.org. Well, again, this has been a real exciting episode for me, and um, I'm really hoping well, that... Um, well, this has certainly been a very exciting episode for the R podcast, and I'm definitely excited that hopefully uh, conduct some more interviews in the future. And um, I couldn't have asked for a better first interview. Like I was saying to myself, this was like hitting a home run in your first at bat. I'm just really excited that we're able to get an Iwa here on the show. So that's, that's it for me. So until next time. End of line.